Today I'm going to talk about what Elvish actually is. Now when I say Elvish, what am I specifically referring to? Tolkien was a professor of philology, and he absolutely adored language. Specifically, he loved historical linguistics. Tolkien would construct incredibly complex languages which would have incorporated rich histories. These histories formed the basis of the entire fantasy world of Middle-earth. For Tolkien, writing novels like The Lord of the Rings was a side project to explain how his made-up languages came to be. That is, he built this entire world of myths, legends, and histories just to weave them around his constructed languages. Now that's dedication. Some of these languages are the languages of men, like Adunaic, Westron, and Rohirric. There's dwarvish languages like Kuzdul, there's the dark tongue of Mordor known as Black Speech, and there's tons of elvish languages and dialects like Quenya, Teleron, and Sindarin. Right, so in this video I'm going to be focusing specifically on examining the different dialects of elvish. Tolkien wanted his elvish to be realistic and reflect how languages in real life morph, and so he developed multiple forms of the elvish language on which he built his world around. Languages are kind of like animals which undergo biological evolution. They branch and they follow different paths until, although they may have a common ancestor, they are no longer the same at all. From Tolkien's writing, we know that, originally, this original language, or proto-language, is known as Primitive Quenya, and this developed into separate languages known as Alvari and Common Eldarin. We know very little about Alvari since it died out, but Common Eldarin was the original language of the Vanyar, the Noldor, and the Tillery, which are the types of elves we sort of, kind of, know and love in Middle-earth. Quenya emerged from Common Eldrin as the language of elves who had left Middle-earth for Amon. Amon is beyond the Grey Haven's port. So, you know, the place where half the characters and all the elves in Lord of the Rings sailed from at the end. So, anyway, skipping over the rest of the ridiculously complicated history, we end up at the end of the Third Age when Lord of the Rings takes place. Here, Quenya is kind of a scholarly language, something elves learn as a second language to study lore and write fanciful things. So basically, Quenya became what Latin is in today's world. No one actually speaks Latin, but, you know, we use it for academics and occasionally to make ourselves sound smart. So at the end of the Third Age, the everyday conversational language of the elves was Sindarin, which was an offshoot of another branch from Common Aldrin. And wow, this language is complicated. And this is so impressive considering that, again, this language is made up and it's made up so well that it's as complicated as any real language, which is to say, very, very complicated. By the way, I already made a video about Quenya and why it sounds elvish, and you can check that out in the description of this video. So, let's quickly go over a condensed version of how Sindarin evolved. Again, for the sake of clarity, Sindarin is the everyday language of elves in Lord of the Rings. So that's Legolas, Arwen, Haldir, all the elves you see in these movies. And so it's the language that we hear them speaking the most during this time period. In brief, Sindarin was the language of the elves who stayed on Middle-earth. The elves were a divided people, meaning that different branches of elves identified themselves as distinct from others, even those living at the same time in the same general geographic region as them. So, after the Vanyar and Noldor elves had already left Middle-earth on the Great Journey into the West, all that was left were the Tellery elves. Don't worry about details like this. I've already said a ton, but the who's, why's, and how's of this situation are absurdly complicated. So when this third clan of elves, the Tellery, left from the Grey Havens, they essentially ended up splitting into three groups. The group that actually left Middle-earth for real were the Falmari. The other two groups, the Sindar and the Nandor, ended up abandoning the journey. 
they decided to never even bother trying to get to Amon, and they elected to stay on Middle Earth. By the Third Age, the Sindar and the Nandor were kind of intermingled, but basically the Sindar were the Grey Elves while the Nandor included the Sylvan Wood Elves. Basically, the Sindar Elves were from Beleriand, in the northwestish part of Middle Earth. Sindar Elves included the likes of Caliporn, Thranduil, and our boy Legolas. Interestingly, Thranduil and Legolas were both Sindar Elves who ruled over populations of Sylvan Elves, since Sylvan Elves were the ones living in places we see in the movies like Mirkwood and Lothlorien. The only probably Sylvan Elf from the Lord of the Rings movies that I can think of is Haldir. Most of the other elves we see in the movies, like Galadriel and Elrond, are really, really, really old elves, even by the elves standard, so they're not actually Sindar elves or even Nandor Sylvan elves. So back to the language. The common tongue of Sindar was Sindarin. This was also the most prominent language among the rest of the elves and the rangers who lived in Middle-earth during the Third Age. So even though Westron was the most... Um, common language in Middle-earth, Sindarin was by far the most commonly spoken dialect of Elvish at this time in Middle-earth. Okay, that is more than enough Elvish for today. I know this is pretty complicated, but I hope I was able to explain it semi-decently and that you find the historical linguistics of a conlang like Elvish just as interesting as I do. So what interests you the most about language? Is there anything else you've wondered about the conlangs of Middle-earth? Let me know in the comments and who knows, maybe I'll make a video about it. Thanks for watching and be sure to subscribe for more videos.